Hey, happy Fitness Friday, TGIF to all you guys. This is our kind of weekly, semi-weekly uh, Facebook Live follow along workout. What did we miss last week? What, we what was going on with that? Well, there may have been a beach trip involved. A beach trip? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that happens, but we want to try to bring you guys weekly content on this journey to Fit by Friday. Fit by Friday, which is today, so we need to be fit. Fit by fit 50. By which we got a little bit more time there. So anyway, kind of giving you guys some insights. Today we did a uh, basically a sit to stand test. Sit to stand and test. we're gonna break this down a little bit for you guys today and show you. So if you saw it this morning and you thought it was too hard, I'm gonna take this guy. Do you think you could could have done that? Could you sit on and stand up? Well, I, it, well, let's talk about that first because uh, the people that may be joining us, mm -hmm. this is a test to determine how long you could live. Right, exactly. So. Real quick, and, and just kind of as a basics here, we do a lot of things that determine like health. So you look at, uh, for example, like the cardio uh, stress test that a doctor, he sure. puts a little electrodes on you, get on the treadmill, and he's assessing your heart. It's basically a way of measuring, like what's your likelihood of having a heart attack in the next one, three, or five years? Problem is, what they found is a lot of physicians and therapists is people can pass that test. They can get on a bike, they can get on a treadmill, they can even go for a run, but if you ask them things like, hey, tie your shoes, oh, that's hard. You tried it the other day. Uh, Got to bring the foot up here to tie the shoes. Exactly. Or get up off the ground. It becomes difficult. So this Brazilian sit test, Dr. Arojo, Clojo Arojo, say that five times his name, from Rio, okay, uh, came up with this test. He tracked it for two decades of people and basically found that if you could go to the floor, stand up without any assistance, you had the greatest likelihood of surviving the next seven years. If you couldn't, Every point that you lose, and we're going to kind of teach this, is that you know you had a decrease of 21% in mortality rate. So people that struggle getting down struggle in their health, struggle in their nutrition, struggle with everything because they're less active. Okay. So as a for example, and we're going to start with something real, real basic. Like I want you first. Okay. Tom. Yes. We're going to use the bench here. So right. stand right here. The test is on the floor. We're going to get to that. Let's see where he's at here first. So okay. I want you to cross one leg over and then sit down onto the bench and stand up, okay? Now switch legs, okay? Yeah. Great job, come back up. Now, step out, that was beautiful. Thank you. Here's the actual test, workout's over Thank with. You. No, it's not. Okay. I want you, whatever hands you need to use, okay? Cross one leg over, one leg. go to the floor. Go to the floor, all right? <laughs> so, by the way, if you can go all the way down, <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. And we got to get back up. Uh huh. All so, right. however many hands, knees you need to get back up on the floor. You, you want to help me up? <laughs> that would be a zero. Uh, okay. All right. So the perfect score uh, would be if I can go all the way down, that's a perfect ten. When you in, in the test, you lose a point for every hand, knee, or side of the leg that you use. So when I go here, if I put a hand here for support, that's a nine, eight, side of the leg. That would be a seven. I'm already at seven, now I gotta get back up. Six, six, five, four. Oh, and if I lose my balance, that's another half point. So, so you get a point off for balance. Half point. Okay. Half point for balance. Half point. So when you look at this, it's like, well, how does this, what's this got to do with health and nutrition, all this stuff? People that this is hard for have a harder time living an active fit lifestyle. And if you're not as active, the first thing that gets derailed is nutrition. So we don't exercise as much because it's hard, we don't eat as well, suddenly the things like obesity, hypertension, those things start coming into play. Point is, as they tracked this over two decades, they found that the people that scored eight and above, great chance of living the next decade of their life. If you score between four to eight, half, uh, like 50% more likely to have some type of issue in your life. How long does it take someone? Because you probably, well, I was probably about a six, or, or maybe not even that. Yeah, no, I'll well, yeah. about a six. How long does it take once you start to work out, get more physically mobile, work out the joint issues, to work back up to a seven, an eight, a nine? Great a nine question. And a half, ten. Well, I, I'm, let me turn that around. What do you think is the two biggest uh, contributing factors to you falling or going down? In I'll tell you right now. In, in, in the time that I've spent with him, I've had this recurring knee problem. That's one. It's a joint. <clears throat> right. Now, if it weren't for this, I probably could get down and get back up a little bit better. Right. So, which brings up a great point, if you are following along with us, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some easy progressions to learn how to get into this, to make it easier, if you are a six or a five or a four. Okay. Quick note, if you know you have bad knees, bad hips, bad back, we don't do this. Okay. 
unless you've got some assistance. We start right back. Okay, you're out, man. I'm all on. <laughs> But I do want to show you some ways of getting into it. So you saw he just scored a six. We're going to see. We're not going to get it perfectly today. Can we make that better? Can sure. we get you? And, but, but back to the original question, like, what are the two things? Probably flexibility and balance. Okay. Right? Would that kind of be? That would you, be you need balance. You need some flexibility. Sure. sure. And, of course, the joint pain mm -hmm. is a different issue. So let's uh, space out right here. We're going to do this together. You guys, if you are following along in the workplace, pull up, get away from the desk. I'm not sure your boss will like this. But we're going to basically reverse engineer. The goal is to get down on the floor and get back out. Think about what we do as infants. We don't do this. A baby doesn't do this to get on the floor, right? What does a baby do? We start hinging at the hips first, right? So I want you to come out like such, put your palms down, and I want you to feel the hips side to side, okay? okay. All we're going to do is from here, take a couple steps out, and then I want you to walk it back up, stand. That's the beginning stages of it. Let's do that again. Hinge at the hips. Push back, so we're working getting on the ground, pushing back up, stand, we're going to do that one more time, back, think about your spine being a nice flat plane. Now, how are we doing so far? Okay. That was pretty easy, sure. right? Sure, sure. But we're not actually on the floor. No. So, let's walk it out this time, and with your right foot, okay. I want right. you to shoot it through and sit here. There you go. Sit down. Back. Good. Okay. Now come back into that bear crawl position. Here. Beautiful. Back onto the right hip. To right hip. Yeah. And back up. Good. There's your bear. This is kind of your home base right here. Okay. Now to the left side. Sit on the left hip. Okay. Back up. Bear crawl position. Back to the left hip. Back to the bear crawl position. Walk it back up. Stand. Okay, so how's everything feel on that? And what did you feel? What did I feel? Well, I'll tell you what I felt. Considering yesterday, he worked me out pretty good. It was a hard workout. Feeling some sore muscles. Felt a little bit more in the legs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a little more in the arms and the right. shoulders. Exactly. By the way, he did 30 pull-ups and 50 push-ups push in 10 minutes. So, so props to that. So, you got to feel for that. So, we got to know how to get on the ground and how to get up. This is actually how babies we start in infancy. We start crawling, rolling, and getting up, right? Okay. So now let's go back, let's put this together. Walk it out, sit on the right hip. Okay. Come back up here, walk it up, heels. Now even though we're just moving, we're gonna flow from one side to the next. Go left hip this time. Okay. You're gonna feel a big time, metal, the heart is pumping, right? Oh yeah. Big time, and we're not using weights, no dumbbells. One more on each side. Here. Well, maybe just me. <laughs> yes, body weight, right hip, walk it up. And we're going left hip, and we're walking it back up. Okay. Let me just say, for everybody that's, that's a beginner, that right there is all you need. I mean, that is, that's a workout, man. Yeah. We're talking metabolic effect. We're talking shoulders, trunk, mobility work, getting up and down off the floor. It's phenomenal. So, and you can go at your own pace, but we're going to kind of layer this and make it even more interesting, right? Okay. So now we hinge back. Tom, I want you to think. Going to that right hip. Okay. We're going to go left side to right side. So come back to the bear crawl. Left. Okay. Bear crawl. Right hip. Right. Flow through it. Flow through it. You know, hey, what are you thinking? Maybe we throw down some cardboard, break out the run DMC, wear the chains, and we can get it going. This is Tom <laughs> Brandon, circa 1984, with the parachute pants and the shades. This is him. Good. Now, bear crawl. Oh, walk it back up. Okay. I mean, that right there. That right there, it looks ridiculous, but you know what? Man, what a freaking workout. Right. So let's go, let's apply this back to the, the sit to stand. Okay. Anything else other than the heart rate that you felt there? Heart rate's going up. Yeah, big well, time. Cardio. I, let's address this real quick. Once again, you said earlier that if you've got knee pain, hip pain, joint pain, right. this isn't for you. So, what yeah. Problems? Well, it's especially with the Brazilian sit test. So if you think about this, this is kind of advanced. This requires a lot of knee stability, hip and back, so it's a little bit advanced. Versus someone, this is more foundational to how we sure. get up as children, you know? Sure. So that could be, so this, again, if your back hurts, we don't do it. If it feels sketchy, we don't do it. If you have sharp pain in there, we don't do it. But learning how to hinge, just getting here is a movement that we can all kind of practice. And the great thing I love about this, versus working out on machines, this, directly applicable to life. Right, we're going to have. We better know how to get up and down off the floor. Otherwise, 
Have it together. Stuff you know what I'm saying? Is your heart rate's going to go up and you're going to burn some calories in this. Right. As well. So you perfectly executed the Brazilian set test on the bench. Uh -oh. Let's move just, what would that say? Maybe six inches down? Maybe that. Okay. okay. So now we do the same thing left over the right. I'm going to make sure that I don't miss right. it. Exactly. Okay. Control it down. Good. Cross leg, that's switch legs. That's it. Bench. Love it. Love it. Okay. Can you feel for it, right? So I already get a little bit better at this. I'm so I mean if I had a gold star, I would stick it on your right legs. So you can kind of see kind of where, where we're leading to. This could be honestly, you could start with a chair and learning how to practice sitting down in a chair without plopping and practice not using your hands to assist you from getting in and out of your chair. Learn how to sit, push back, sit, and then from there we would try the crossover fence. That'd be a, a deeper squat. That is very good. Okay. And the chair, the bench can be a great foundational exercise. Okay. Now, let's go back into this, what we're calling this nice little break dancing situation. Yeah. Let's add some layers to it. So now, we're gonna okay. come here, hinge it out. I want you to step forward with the left foot. Okay. Right there, reach up. Go back to the push up position. Go right foot, reach up. Okay. And we're gonna flow back and forth here. Another time, left. Rotation, so we're getting shoulders, trunk, hip mobility, and it's all body weight. You can take these kind of workouts with you wherever you go. And we look like a little, kind of a dance team here, man. You know what? We're in sync together. What about the judges? What will the judges say? <laughs> Great job. Now, walk it back up. And one big thing I'd like to get people to understand, minute of mobility work. It's metabolic, it gets it up in 60 seconds, a lot of research shows that 60 seconds, just a minute of activity a day has a big metabolic effect on people. So if you're short on time, I don't have time to get to the gym, you can do this stuff at home for one minute and get that metabolism jacked up. One minute. That's it. And I can say this, if I can certainly do a minute, then you can do a minute. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to layer this again here. So we hinge back, just build upon it little by little. And this time I want you to push up into a pipe. Okay. Right there, stretch the heel cords out, come back into a push-up hold, lunge left, reach left, back into the pike, lunge right, reach right. And again, you can kind of cherry pick. They're calling you with questions. <laughs> push back one more on the right, lunge it, step it up. Now, walk it up, walk it up, walk it up, walk it up. Okay. From a muscle standpoint, what do you feel on that? I'm pretty sore. <laughs> a lot of that's from yesterday. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're, yeah. you're feeling the, I feel a lot of the muscles that. What is uh? So what's what is harder for you in terms of like getting down into the ground? What's hard, harder? Shoulders, abs, legs. What do you feel the most? I mean, you're pretty strong in your upper body. Do you feel it more in the hips? Man, that's that's a good one. Yeah. You Probably, can really kind of feel it all a few, over. a few other a few places. Yeah, but there's not just one area that just screams. Yeah, you're really burning me here. That's right. It's, it's okay. all areas. Yeah, it's good. Okay. okay, so we're building up on this. But first, let's go back to the test here. Okay, this one or you want the other one? <sighs> well, you know, this is where we're working right. towards. Okay. So uh, do you want to get a practice set on the box, and then we're going to move to the aerobic step? Okay, let's do it. So you want to do the practice one? Okay, one more, just to make sure I don't fall. Left over right. Left over right. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm so afraid I'm going to miss. <laughs> <laughs> Switch legs. And also while you're doing this, tell me which leg is stronger. Which leg has better strong. balance? Yeah. I'd say that's the left yeah. one. Okay, so there is a difference. Another big key. We're never symmetrical. We have arms, shoulders, legs, everything from side to side. We have a dominant eye, dominant hand. So you're going to you use certain legs or arms more so than others. So okay. there's probably something to feel from that. Okay, here we go. So we're moving this down. So again, this could be your chair. This could be, you know, whatever, a box, low box ottoman. Okay. This could be the bottom of your staircase. So it's a long ways down. <coughs> right there. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, try one more time. <laughs> I <not> failed. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> All right. You did it. Oh, I'm impressed right there. That was okay. good. Thank you. Not That's great. Way. Switch it. Yeah. All right. Honestly, I thought I was going to have to help you up. 
So, beautiful. Yay. And the crowd is going crazy right now, I can tell. So, easier going down, easier going up. You should practice in intervals then. You should start. Yes. Okay. Start right here. And learning some motor control and some hip control. Right. Right there. So, now let's get back into speaking back to the hips here. We're going to go a little bit super wide. I want to work on getting on the floor this direction, opening up the hips. We're going to flow back and forth. And I want you to work on sinking the hips lower, lifting the chest up. You can come forward as much as you need to with the leg a little bit as long as you push the heels. What do you call this? The monkey crawl? Monkey lunge. Monkey lunge. It's about getting on the floor. I want you to really work into this position here. Well, you're also stretching out your muscles. Yes. Yeah. Should you but who? tell me about the heart rate. Heart rate's up. Heart rate's up, man. Heart rate's up. People don't think this is cardio. Now hinge it back. Let's go out into that push up hold position. This time from here, from this plank or high point position, we're going to come up, reach up with the right, okay. back down, reach up with the left. This is awesome for your thoracic spine, basically your upper mid back, where your posture muscles are. This will make, it'll, it'll straighten you up and make you about a half inch taller. All right, let's do one more on each side here. Okay. Here. Walk it back up. Breathe and relax. Okay. So, what do you feel? I feel like a good little workout just from doing what stretching we've done here. Exactly. So, if you yeah. could tell somebody, I mean, like, obviously, we started this January 1, they're about, maybe. It's yeah, this is what, a good full two months into this. And we're, we really are about eight weeks. Tips for people just getting started. What's been your eight-week journey? What's some things that you've noticed in yourself? And if you could go back and advise Tom Brandon eight weeks ago, what would you tell him? <laughs> I would advise Tom Brandon eight weeks ago to, to not stop moving. Movement. Yeah. To Basic move human movements, right. Walking. Uh, doing a little more stretching exercise. Right. Address this because this could this knee thing could have been from an old sports injury that eventually catches up to you. Sure. For those of you at home that maybe have a joint, shoulder, elbow, knee, what, what is the best way to try to work this out? So that we're able to right. step back, do this without losing balance, falling on our face. Great question. Okay. So typically, I mean, there could be, uh, if he has a knee pain, or maybe it's low back pain, maybe it's shoulder issue, maybe it's elbow, maybe it's wrist, anything, you can kind of, there could be a laundry list of 30 things that could be causing that knee to hurt. So it's never kind of like one isolated deal. Uh, and, and so that's what physical therapists, orthopedics, we, we kind of look at like all the different issues that could be causing discomfort. Typically, you can categorize them into two things. Okay. Usually, there's some type of stiffness, tightness, knots above and below the issue. So, okay. if that hurts right there, we always work upstream and downstream. Okay. Also, okay. there can be inflammation, swelling in the joint, sometimes both. So, mm -hmm. for you, we know we've got kind of a knot issue right here, a trigger point here that's causing that knee to really not track right. Sure. So, we're always working on some massage, tissue quality, stretching. And some corrective exercise but there's also could be some swelling in the knee sure. so you want to basically reduce inflammation there's a whole host of issues check with your physician I always refer out to someone if their knees hurt go to your physician first uh, but then there's also some basic things that we can do from a maintenance standpoint yeah okay yeah that's great questions if you have any questions let you handle please send them our way right and uh, while the, we're awaiting, maybe nobody even cares about this. <laughs> we may have lost our eyes. But one thing I say about the, the sit to stand, don't get so caught up in this. You know, you can research this. There is kind of a mortality rate that they talk about, like, um, you know, if you get below a four, you're five times more likely to die within the next seven years. Look, I didn't make up the study, you know, and I'm not even sure I buy all into that. But the, the point is, the more active we are throughout our lifetime, especially if you're 50 and over, mobility, being able to get on the ground, catch yourself from falling, learning how to get on the floor. If I've never been on the ground for a decade of my life and I trip and fall, mm -hmm. I don't even know how to go down. Yeah. You know? How, how, what do you, how do you fall? I mean, learning how to fall. What do you fall on or try to fall on to, to maybe cushion that fall other than your head? Yeah. Well, I mean, th th think about what we just did. You know, being able to support your hands to be able to go down and catch yourself. If you've never done that, just that simple mm -hmm. deal there, if you've never done it in a while, you don't know how to stabilize your body, catch yourself, balance is off. So practicing balance, practicing mobility, practicing getting on the ground, and being on the ground yep. is key. Yeah. Man, any questions? Okay. 
We answered so, everything. Answered everything. Now, here, here's one thing that, that you can do. If you have a question for Jeff, you can leave it on this Facebook post. It could be about an exercise. It could be about, hey, my, my shoulder's bugging me, or it could be about pull muscles. Or right. Let him help you out. I mean, this is some good free advice here. Also, uh, our, our sit test, kind of the standards, the point system, mm -hmm. if we didn't make sense of what we were doing, we're actually, I sent this in, and I think Alicia's going to post this okay. on the Facebook page. So be looking for that and get a copy of that and maybe kind of check it out. Again, just practice. You want to see an example of a nine and a half? Almost a ten? Yeah. Man, you want to do the sit? She did this at home. She went down. Went Way right to put up. her on the spot, man. Come on. You want to whoa, whoa. Come, Leanne, now, come up. I heard it was a 10. You said a 10. Yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. This I'm perfect. trying to make everybody feel better. Okay. Hey, thanks Me, for tuning I'm in. Six. Also, leave some comments below on things you'd like to see. We're going to be doing some follow-on workouts, but just some things for life and benefits. So uh, give us some feedback on what you want to see, and we'll try to we'll give you some it. good content. Sounds good. Thank you for All joining right. us today. Have a great weekend.